Not everyone has the ability, knowledge, or time to be able to go out and kill their own meal. A lot of people don't want to because they can't handle the weight of taking an animal's life, but they still choose to eat meat, which I find kind of... Hi, this is Lucy and this is Mashur. Mashur. Sorry. I have a sign with three questions for animal lovers. Are you an animal lover? I consider myself an animal lover. Mm -hmm. Yes, I am. Tell me more about that. Um, one thing that, that bothers me is that they are innocent beings and most of the times what we think is that we have other like abilities like thinking abilities talking abilities that we can use for ourselves to be in a better place they can express their feelings sometimes mm -hmm. they probably don't know what is good for them like when they're puppies mm -hmm. or small, small kids if we as human beings show kindness towards them I think that that would help us in many ways. I believe that animals have certain rights and certain feelings and that as a society we treat animals based on how they look, if they're cute or not, where if there's like a cute animal of course people are going to treat it right, but if it's not like a stereotypical cute animal like uh, no cows or chicken or all of that, they get less rights and less consideration. I believe they need more justice, but at the same time I also understand it's a complicated subject that needs more awareness to be dealt with. Wow, <laughs> very good. I mean, interesting answer. What do you think about animal abuse or people who abuse animals? What do you mean by abusing animals? Like beating them? Whatever or? your definition is. I think animal abuse is one of the worst crimes people can commit. I truly feel horrendous for the animals that have to experience that, whether it's domesticated pets that are being abused by their owners or being neglected and forced into animal fighting. And I do think that the people who cause this type of situation should be criminally prosecuted, arrested, tried, all that. I hope people can have the empathy to not treat animals like that. I haven't been exposed to seeing people abusing animals apart from the fact that some animals are being slaughtered or killed for eating purposes. One example I can give you is the race horses. I think mm. that some metal stuffs are put on their feet and those metals are heated so that that can feed the feet of the horses that falls in animal abuses because you are modifying the leg of an animal for your own purposes. In the past I think they used to use the sledge, one kind of a vehicle that animals would pull you to go from one point to another. That's also I think animal abuse. Very good answer. I've never <laughs> heard that before. That's very original to me. Do you think harm, exploitation or abuse happens on animal farms or in solar houses? Oh absolutely. I believe so. I think so because you do all sorts of artificial stuffs with animals in farms. I, I believe that it is probably a kind of an animal abuse to put chemical stuffs inside the body of an animal so that the meat in the animal grows faster. I know for sure that either chicken farms, cow farms, they're kept in pretty unclean conditions. They're cramped, kept in cages that never see the light of day. If you see photos of them, they lose all their feathers because of the stress. For what it is, I, I do think it's quite heartbreaking to see the conditions that those animals in slaughterhouses find themselves in. The last question is a little touchy, but I really get it because I used to do it for a long time myself as well. Do you eat cows, pigs, fish, eggs, or whale leather, for example? Yes to both, but I primarily do try to limit the amount of store-bought and restaurant-bought produce that I buy. I grew up hunting my own meat about once a year or once every other year. I do go out and kill either an elk or a deer in as a humane way as possible. So that I do feel like I have that moralistic work that I put into obtaining the meat rather than just seeing it on the store-bought shelf and not seeing it in the eyes and seeing what it was before. Yeah, I, I, I do eat cows, fish, and poultry. Would it be okay if I show you a three minute video on the standard practices in animal agriculture? Absolutely. Awesome. Sure. Mm -hmm. These practices are standard across the board. So small farms, most of these, they also do it mm -hmm. there. And a lot of them are considered humane, actually. Um, it's not like some crazy random <laughs> form or sort of house. Because there's no real point in showing that, right? Fragile young piglets have their tails cut off, ears and teeth clipped, and the meals are castrated, all without anesthesia. Unwanted runts are commonly killed by violently slamming their heads against the floor, a practice known as thumping. appreciate you sitting through this. Yeah. I know it can be pretty damn rough. <laughs> oh, it's, it's horrendous, things that they go through. To be honest, I already knew at least 60-70% of what you showed me. Almost all around the world, people are doing this. How did that make you feel? It, it's just a reminder of the absolute brutality that goes on and the expense of animal lives for human conveniency. It's heartbreaking, truly, the amount of suffering that goes on for the fucking food. I, I feel strongly that a lot needs to change in terms of animal rights and animal abuse, so things like that don't continue. And if it comes at the cost of conveniency or economic costs, then so be it. I feel like lives are worth more than just dollars, so regardless if they're human or not.
I wonder how we could stop it. You know that one of the options could be that we all go vegetarian, but there are 8 billion people in the world, so you have to push 6 billion people to go vegetarian, which probably is an unrealistic solution to me. Like, yeah, I can personally go vegetarian, but that would not change the world. So what do you suggest, like, how could it change this situation, this animal abuse? Mm -hmm. He went right through the... <laughs> it's awesome! I felt this way for many years, that mm -hmm. it's kind of powerless, like it's too big for me, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Which is true in many ways. I do have an influence as an individual, I can try as much as possible to change some people's minds. Social change always starts with a few people, and then it grows and it takes momentum, right? There's a lot of different estimates, but vegans in general save between 30 to 600 lives per year, just because they're not reinforcing the One demand. vegan a year? Mm -hmm between 30 to 600 lives, which is pretty cool. <laughs> Have you noticed that there's been way more like talk about veganism? 15 years ago, no one really knew what vegan meant. Mm -hmm. So what do you think we can do individually to help these animals? Well, I feel that first and foremost, awareness needs to be spread because majority of people either aren't conscious or choose not to think about how their food is grown and then slaughtered and have all the processes that take place before they eat. If there's more of awareness and more consciousness in the general public, I would at least hope that the general population would have enough empathy to fight for more animal rights politically so that more common standards are rejected and more ethical and humane practices are implemented. What does that look like? Like the humane way to you know, it's, these uh, it's, it's It's a hard gray area to work in because even with quote-unquote free-range chicken they're still kept in cages they're still kept outside of yeah, the sunlight yeah. yeah it's it goes from having small cages to like a little bit bigger which is really not much of a fucking solution but I think if anesthesia is more commonly practiced if they could be kept with their parents after being born I would try to avoid eating these kind of meats if I know that these meats are produced these ways if I know that the animal was grown naturally and then maybe it was slaughtered at a point of its life that it would die in a few days. What is the percentage to you of okay. it looking like this in the video? I probably it's 90% but surprisingly, Bangladesh is a very small country but if you, if you go search there, these kind of farms are at a very small scale and cows and poultry are grown naturally at basically very personal levels. Cows are used, I mean, they're, they're kind of abused I would say because cows are used to cultivate the land mm -hmm. so they are kind of maybe abused or may not be abused because they are not forced to do anything that's beyond their capacity they're the part of family to be honest I have seen people crying while selling the cows when they, they need money they need to sell and then ultimately those cows are being slaughtered and then sold my guess would be around 95% of the meat that is produced is through this this kind of procedure exactly right do you think we need to eat animals or their secretions to be healthy no nutritionally speaking we need protein but at the same time i feel like the just sheer amount of meat that we eat especially in the u.s is uncalled for it's unnecessary it's not only damaging for the environment with the amount of methane being produced from cattle farms it's inhumane i think if people could cut back on meat would be a lot healthier yeah there would need to be some sort of change in the diet i guess of normal day-to-day -day society you can get protein from beans and other different types of grains there's much more simple solutions to fix the problem that the animal and food industry have caused that's a very complicated question i believe that it is necessary for your nutrition to have some sort of animal protein but the world is moving fast to producing alternatives i have a very little idea about how good is that alternative compared to the actual one. You might enlighten me in that perspective, like if I go vegan or vegetarian instead of having protein on my plate, would that help me as much as having the meat or will I have some sort of a deficiency? Is there any kind of a study? I'd like to get, <laughs> get enlightened yeah. from you. The Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics yeah. is one of the biggest group of nutritionists in the world. Mm -hmm. And in 2016, they said that a vegan diet is adequate for all ages, including pregnancy and also for athletes. Yeah. which is really cool to know. So basically you can get everything you need through a plant-based diet or vegan diet. Literally everybody I talked to, and me included, before I actually <laughs> looked into this stuff, everybody's worried about protein and whether we have deficiencies on vegan mm -hmm. diet, which is fair enough because it's fairly new to especially our culture. It's interesting because there's been studies showing that vegans and non-vegans get 70% more protein from their diet than they need. <laughs> The people who need to worry about it are people who don't eat enough, who don't get enough calories, but people who get enough calories really don't need to worry about that. <laughs>
That's good to know. We can okay. be so much more healthy without okay. it, but as it is here, at least in the U.S., societally it's more focused on day-to-day -day eating, store-bought food, and there's less of a consensus of being able to cook on your own with more natural grains, all these other substitutes which could replace meat in our diet. It's completely possible. There's other substitutions that I think are a lot better and ethical than just cheap meat. The issue is that we see that there are plant-based meat, plant-based stuff. That stuff is so expensive. If it is possible to make plant-based stuff cheaper or affordable, I think more people will go towards being vegan or vegetarian. It would be difficult, I mean, for me to go vegan right away from tomorrow. But if I have an alternative, like smokers, you would use vape one step at a time. Do you think that this industry would make things affordable for people? There's been a huge study to compare different diets and how expensive and cheap they were. And they discovered that vegan diets were actually 30% cheaper on average yeah. in Western countries than non-vegan diets. And they did include like tofu and things like that mm -hmm. in there, all the impossible burgers and stuff like yeah. that. They tend to be expensive. I think it's because they're new. They don't have subsidies like meat, etc. Yeah. Right, has <laughs> yet. <laughs> the more people buy them, the less expensive they're gonna be. The thing with these alternatives, like they're not a necessary part of veganism. They're more like a treat kind of thing. They're not necessarily super healthy for you because they have a lot of oil or things like that sometimes in them. The bulk of my diet is more like beans, like curry, risotto stuff like this but i honestly actually buy a bunch of vegan sausages for example mm. and i live on like one income with my husband and it's expensive around here and we're doing good so really it is completely possible not everyone has the ability knowledge or time to be able to go out and forage and kill their own meal a lot of people don't want to because they can't handle the weight of taking an animal's life but they still choose to eat meat which i find kind of Critical. Is it you're vegan, not vegetarian? Yeah, vegan. So do you think that getting the milk or eggs is exploiting them? What do you think? My grandparents had had cows. They would let the cow drink its mother's milk first, and then they would take the milk in the morning, and in the evening the same thing. So I thought that was fair. I don't know what is happening around the world in the farms in terms of getting the milk. The common practice is to take the calf away from the mother after a day. Oh, okay. um, and kill them or oh. they're just gonna be bred for meat so that's pretty obvious why I don't like that okay. but but for what you mentioned as a vegan I don't see that the cow's milk is for us if you have a pet for example your dog and someone wants to milk them every so often but what would you say to that like is it okay to you why, why would you want to do that if you don't need to the way I see it it's still exploitation it's it's using their bodies you know and, and they do end up being sort of there's a human breastfeeding their baby like why would I go and take some it's like what <laughs> we think in our back of our mind that milk is necessary for our nutrition and stuff and milk has gotten into our meals and different kind of dishes in so many ways that stopping is kind of a shock for me at this moment is there any alternative that has been put that yeah. has been okay I'm from France, okay. the land of cheese, <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> the land of milk and cheese and meat. I obviously very much understand, vegans still drink milk. There's yeah. plenty of plant milks. I think there's like 17 by now. Oh yeah, there's the so almond many. Almond milks and other stuff. I drink almond milk a lot. Honestly, as a vegan these days, especially because that was different like 20 years ago maybe. But these days the alternatives are not that expensive anymore. Especially milks, it's not not as expensive. Yeah. Uh, it's really easy to find. It's like pretty much in all stores. Yeah, I'll definitely try the vegan kind of milk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can I can switch to vegan kind of milk. Let's move away from more like the store. What kind mm -hmm. of thing about the hunting thing?